and uh, take the eigenvectors, put them together, which are kind of creating the basis of Fn, put them together in, as column vectors in P, and this is going to give you the matrix that you need to diagonalize A actually. In other words, A can be factorized in this manner. Okay. So let's write, for example, let's do an example like that. Okay. Let's do an example. Let's first do this example. We have discussed it several times. So the A is take the matrix A as 1, 0, uh, 0, 1 actually. What we can see that characteristic polynomial of this is negative x minus 1 squared. So in other words, it's a vector. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a polynomial whose one root is lambda equal to 1. So the lambda equal to 1 is the eigenvalue of it. Okay? It doesn't have two distinct eigenvalues. So lambda equal to 1 is the eigenvalue. So if the lambda equal to 1 is eigenvalue, um, what would be the eigenvector corresponding to it? So ax equal to x, where x is some arbitrary vector Okay, in, say, R2. Okay, and R2. So this 1, 1, 0, 1 times x1, x2 equal to x1, x2 would give you what? So it's going to give you x1 plus x2 equal to 0, uh, equal to x1, and x2 is equal to x2. So from first equation, you can deduce that your x2 is 0. Okay? So in other words, the eigenspace of the matrix A associated with 1 is spanned by only one vector actually. Okay? And that one vector is what do you call equal to 1. Uh, no, that one vector is 1, 0. Okay? 1, 0. Now, does this vector 1, 0 constitute a basis of um, so x2 is 0 hence the eigenvectors of the matrix A are of the form x1 0 actually ok x1 0 or uh, you can say that the eigenspace of the matrix A associated with eigenvalue 1 is spanned by a vector 1 0 Okay, a vector 1, 0. Question Does this vector form a basis for R2? It forms a basis for R2. The answer is no, actually. Okay, the answer is no. You can't find a basis for, uh, you know, this vector 1, 0 cannot form a basis for R2. So this means that this matrix is not diagonalizable, actually. This matrix is not diagonalizable because. The eigenvectors associated with all eigenvalues are not finding, computing, are, are not, um, what do you call, constituting a basis for R2. So this is not a diagonalizable vector. You can see it for another reason, that if you compute what is the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue lambda, it is equal to 1. It is 1. What is the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue lambda? It's 2 actually. So the algebraic multiplicity is different from the geometric multiplicity. Hence, there is another reason that this matrix is not diagonalizable actually. Okay? So in order to diagonalize a matrix, what actually you have to see, compute eigenvalues, compute its all eigenvectors and see that the eigenvectors are constituting the basis for R2 or whatever is the order of the matrix are not actually R2 or Rn, whatever is the matrix of order 2. So if they form a basis, you can diagonalize the matrix. If they're not, you can't diagonalize the matrix actually. So this is not diagonalizable. Let's do a vector. Let's let's do an example when matrix is diagonalizable. Okay? When the matrix is diagonalizable. So 
for example, let's take this matrix A, so it's negative 3, 0, negative 2. Okay. This is what this is, is going to be. The characteristic polynomial of this matrix is going to be the determinant. Or shall I write it directly that what will be the eigenvalue? So you can compute that there are two eigenvalues of this matrix. One is lambda 1 equal to 2 and other is lambda 2 equal to minus 2 at 3. So that it has two eigenvalues. Okay. I'm not getting into the calculation of eigenvalues. Let's compute the eigenvectors. So in order to compute the eigenvectors, you have to solve this vector, you know, Ax, say for example, for first lambda 1 equal to 2. In other words, solve this for Ax equal to 2x. Okay? Solve this for Ax equal to 2x. So you're going to get Ax equal to 2x, you're going to get 2 minus 3, 0, negative 2 multiplied by x1, x2 equal to um, 2x1 and 2x2. So if you simplify this, you're going to get 2x1 minus 3x2 equal to 2x1 and minus 2x2 equal to what? Equal to 2x2. Okay? So what follows from, for example, first equation, again that your x2 is 0. Okay? Your x2 is 0. And if the x2 is 0, that means that the eigenvectors has a form of a non-zero entry. So in other words, it has a form of x1 and 0. Okay? This kind of a form actually. So it has this kind of a form. How about the eigenvalue w2? In other words, you can also say, you can also say, that the eigenvectors, okay, so the eigenvectors associated with the eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to 2, they are the multiples of the vector 1, 0. Okay, so in other words, the eigenspace of the matrix A associated with lambda 1 equal to 2 has this basis acted, 1, 0. Okay, and how did I got? Because all so so because you know all these vectors x10 are multiple of vector 10 actually. So this is what really is the foundation of the eigenspace of um, uh, this is what is really the basic eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue lambda actually. Lambda equal to how about lambda equal to negative 2? By repeating the same process, you can see that you're going to get another. Uh, so your x, the eigenvector that you're going to have is going is, is is equal to what you call 3x1 and 4x1. I'm not doing calculation. You can do it for yourself. 3x1 and 4x1. So if this is the case, that means that one particular eigenvector corresponding from this space is really 3 and 4. Or you can say that 3 and 4 is the basis of the eigenspace uh, of the lambda equal to negative 2. Okay? So it's a basis of the eigen, uh, eigenspace of lambda equal to negative 2 actually. Question. So this is a step 1. We computed eigenvalues and eigenvectors and the step two is does they form a basis for you know um, R2 okay R2 why R2 because we are talking about two by two matrices they do they form a basis for R2 okay the answer is yes actually answer is yes these two vectors are linearly independent. In other words, you can't multiply a number by 1, 0 and get 3, 3, 4. So they are linearly independent. So if they are linearly independent, they form a basis for R2. So if they form a basis for R2, the previous result tells you that 
you have um, what do you call the you have um, your matrix is diagonalizable actually. Your matrix is diagonalizable. Okay? Your matrix is diagonalizable. Now what are the diagonal matrices and the matrix P actually? The diagonal matrix is easy. Just take the eigenvalues, put them on diagonal. Negative two zero zero. What would be the matrix P? The matrix P is going to be take the eigenvectors and put them here. So one zero and three four. So you have it. And you can check actually that when you're going to compute, say P D P inverse, you're going to get the matrix here. So hence you have diagonalized it. Hence you have diagonalized this vector. Now, let's see what are some of the benefits of diagonalizing the matrix actually. So, if you have diagonalized it, what does it tell you? Does it tell you anything interesting about the matrix A? The answer is yes. Okay, the answer is yes. So, how can I do it? So let's take for example an arbitrary vector from R2. Okay, let's take an arbitrary vector from R2. Let's take u to be an arbitrary vector. And let's give this vector 1, 0 name A and let's give this 3, 4 vector name B actually. And let's compute what? By the way, u is a vector in R2 and these two are forming a basis for u so therefore u can be written as the linear combination of A and B and this linear combination is like this ok so you can form and formulate a system and solve it so it turns out that when you are going to write u as a linear combination of you know C1, C2, C1, A and C2, B so these constants are going to turn out to be these numbers. What? X minus 3y upon 4a plus y upon y upon 4b actually. Okay? Y upon 4b. Now let's take this arbitrary vector and operate u on it. So when you're going to operate u onto it, what are you going to get? So these are, this is like a scalar so x 3 minus y upon 4. So this a will be multiplied with a y upon 4 and a will be multiplied with b actually. Okay? This will be multiplied with b. But a 1 0 is an eigenvector associated with eigenvalue 2 actually. And b is an eigenvector associated with eigenvalue negative 2. So what you're going to get? The AU is going to be x minus 3y upon 4 and this is going to be 2a plus y upon 4 and uh, this is going to be what? Negative 2b actually. Negative 2b. How about if I again apply, how about if I apply a square u onto it? Okay, apply a square u onto it. So what are you going to get? So again, this will become okay. 2 times of x minus 3y upon 4. So this 2 will stay same. And a operated onto the a will again give you 2a. So you are going to get 2 square a plus y upon 4. And this is going to be negative 2 square b actually negative 2 square b and hence so see not only computing the higher powers of the matrix A is simple so the A power n operated on to u would give you what? it's going to give you x minus 3y upon 4 2 power n times A plus 
uh, y upon 4, okay, and negative 2 power n times what do you call um, times b actually. So, so you see that you have this beautiful expression that no matter what power of a you take and multiply it with arbitrary vector u, just substitute the value of n and calculate the expression actually. Calculate the vector, you can get a, a power n u actually. Okay? You can get a power n u. Another benefit that you can get out of it is, say for example, if you want to compute the power n of the matrix A actually. So we, we, we discussed it last yesterday. So for example, if you have A square and A square is P B P inverse of A actually. Okay? P D P inverse of A. Then oh uh, no, P D P inverse square. And this is going to be same as A square P D square P inverse. In other words, you can get this same expression from a, another quick way actually. Okay, so you don't have to do the calculation. So a square p d square p inverse actually. Okay. Or uh, let me. Okay. So let's let's get the same result. Okay. The same result, but through another what do you call uh, perspective. Okay, from another perspective. So I know that my matrix A is a P D P inverse. Question is what would be A square? So it's gonna be P D P inverse square which is same as P D P inverse multiplied by P D P inverse actually. So therefore P inverse P inverse will get cancelled and you're gonna get P D square P inverse. Even you can inductively show, okay, you can inductively show that a power n is going to be p d power n p inverse n. Okay? Now what is d power n? Okay, what is d power n? What is d power n? So the D is a 2 and negative 2 and we know that it is really easy to calculate the higher power of the diagonal matrix so this is so just simply take the powers of the diagonal entry so it's 2 power n 0 0 negative 2 power n okay and then what you can see actually that if you take this matrix P which is 1, 0 and 3, 4 and compute its inverse so what would be the inverse of this matrix so we need to do the adjoint so it's going to be 4, 1, negative 3 and 0 so we need to change the sign and change the location of these two divided by the determinant actually so it's going to be 4 minus 0 actually so it's going to be 4 so the matrix P inverse is really 1, uh, negative 3 by 4, 0 and 1 over 4 actually. So this is really is the matrix P inverse. So if you compute for example now P D power N P inverse, so this is going to be 1, 3, 0, 4 times 2, 0, 0, negative 2 power n, 0, negative 2 power n times 1, negative 3 over 4, 0 and 1, 4. Okay? So what you are going to get? If you simplify this, you will see that we are going to reach to the precisely same conclusion. And what would be that conclusion? So if you take this row and multiply it with this, first product will become 2 power m take this row in. and then take those row and multiply with this this is going to be no, take the same row and multiply with the second so it's going to be 3 times of negative 2 power n okay 
and then take the second row and multiply with this. You're going to get 0 again. Take this row and multiply with this column. So it's going to be 4 times negative 2 power n and multiply it with say this number 1 minus 3 fourth and 0 and 1 fourth actually. Okay? So what you can do. Take this row, multiply with this, so again you're going to get 2 power n. Take this row and multiply with this, so this is going to be minus 3 fourth 2 power n and 3 fourth, so this row and this column, plus 3 fourth of negative 2 power n actually. Okay, this is what that you're going to get. Then if you take second row and first columns, you're going to get 0. If you get second row and second column, you're going to get negative 2 power n actually. So, with these calculations, what did you get? You get, this is really the formula for a power n. In other words, you know, you don't have to multiply a matrix, say, say for example, if you want to compute a power 100, you don't have to multiply the matrix a 100 times, just substitute 100 here and simplify and you're going to get the matrix actually. And this is really is an interesting benefit of um, computing the uh, for, for a matrix to be diagonalizable actually. Okay, so if the matrix is diagonalizable, you can easily compute its higher powers. Okay, you can easily compute its higher powers. Let's do Let's do another little example. This time we can see that the 3 by 3 matrix. So A is uh, this 3, 3, 2, 2, 4, 2, negative 1, negative 3, 0. Okay? When you're going to compute the characteristic polynomial of this matrix, so it will be like this x minus 1 x minus 2 and x minus 3. So this will be the characteristic polynomial. That means there are three eigenvalues. Lambda 1 is 1, so lambda equal to 1, 2, and 3. So these are the eigenvalues that you have for these. What you can do, you can find the eigenvalues corresponding to each one of these. Actually. For example, for the lambda equal to 1, if you want to find the eigenvalues, you have to solve the system um, ax equal to what you call x actually. Where now x is going to be a 3 by 3 system, x1, x2, and x3. So if you, you know, solve this system, I'm not getting into the all details of it, okay, you can see it from the notes, is that then x would look like this actually. So it's going to be is going to be a vector of this form. So if you have x1 here, 0, x negative x1. Okay, x1, 0, negative x1. That is the underlying basis vector. In other words, the, the vector that is spanning all such vectors is really 1, 0, negative 1. One such vector is this. Okay, or you can also treat that this is the basis vector of the eigenspace of the lambda equal to 1. Similarly, you can calculate the values for lambda equal to 2, okay? Eigenvector for lambda equal to 2. This is not going to be 3 actually, this is going to be 4, okay? So if you compute this for lambda equal to 2, the eigenvector that you're going to get, okay? The eigenvector that you're going to get is going to be of this form. A 
A and negative 2A. Okay, so this is log corresponding to this. The eigenvector is going to be this. And how you can get it by following this AX equal to 2X2. Okay, where X is X1, X2, X3. So the second eigenvector that you get out of uh, particular this by taking, for example, A equal to 1 is 1, 1, and negative 2. Okay, take 1, 1, and negative 2. And then compute lambda equal to 4. Okay, and for lambda equal to 4, the eigen associated the vector associated is A, A, and negative A. Okay, A, A, and negative A. And uh, once you have this, then the third, you can say one eigenvector, you know, which can be treated as the basis of the eigenspace of the matrix A associated with lambda is really 1, 1, negative 1. Okay? It is not difficult to see that these three vectors are linearly independent. Okay? So this V1, V2, V3 are linearly independent. So if they are linearly independent, they form a basis for R3. Okay? They form a basis for R3. So if they form a basis for R3, that means that this matrix is diagonalizable. Okay? This matrix is diagonalizable. And um, what are what is the diagonal matrix for this? Okay, just take these vectors and put them in diagonal entries. Okay, zero and zero here. And the matrix P is going to be the matrix comprising of the vector 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 1, negative 2, and 1, 1, negative 1, actually. Okay? So one exercise for you may be to calculate the A power N for this matrix, actually. Okay? What would be the A power N for this matrix? Okay? Calculate D power N. You have matrix P. Calculate this inverse. Calculate P, D, P inverse and you're going to get the value of the a power n. P, d power n, p inverse actually. Okay, so you're going to get the value of a power n. So this is, these are the three little 